All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right. Check, Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the... car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this! <laughs> what did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! The temporal displacement occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Hot Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ, Doc, you disintegrated Einstein! Calm down, Marty! I didn't disintegrate anything! The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact! Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler! I sent him into the future! One minute into the future, to be exact! And at precisely 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! Uh, Doc? Huh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, w what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. What's in the box? Don't touch that! It's plutonium! But, uh, plutonium? How do you think I generated 1.21 gigawatts of power? Notebook, notebook. Got it! Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention! The thing that makes time travel possible! In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's mass equals I times Z, and E equals the square root of Z times C squared, and the flux dispersal rate is inversely proportional to the fourth root of N, carry the nine, then... Um, Doc, shouldn't we get out of here before the Libyans show up? Uh, Doc? Great Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! Doc! Doc, no! 
I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Doc! Marty, is everything okay? Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late! Are we too late to stop the... sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc's stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty. Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. Hey, let me! Now, Biff... Leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. G sorry, Marty. I miss Einstein. Does nature contrive it? So that even with a time machine, you can intervene to prevent your own conception, for example. Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. Feels like that was a lifetime ago. Actually, I guess it was. Hey, let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. Uh, you got it, Mr. McFly. Enough of that junk. Now, Biff. Sorry, Marty. Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. 
You know, you and my folks go way back. Yeah? So? So how about letting me have that model courthouse uh, for old time's sake? Eh, I think I'll keep it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. <laughs> Hey, Biff. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. It's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. And then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead. Time to get over it and move on. That notebook wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. You calling me ignorant? I'll pay you for it. How much? Uh... Um, Not enough. Ah, uh, never mind. He's dead. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know- Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. About Biff, Dad- <laughs> I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son, I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff, but I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got an obligation to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Hey, Dad. Why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. I keep this picture of my dad to remind me that even the most hopeless losers can grow up to be pretty cool guys. It may not look like much, but it packs a wallop. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look! 
It's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. When it's one for the monkey, two for the snow, three to get ready, now go, Scat, go! Woo! Let's make some noise. And now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming him up for me, butthead. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Whoa! Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. <sighs> Uh, Doc, where are you? Einstein! Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc. recording that the DeLorean's automatic retrieval feature is a resounding success. Automatic retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I program the time machine to jump to these four-dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you've come to my rescue in the past. Or oh, was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading marked Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right, Last Time Departed, Last Time Departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on, come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? Marty? Ah! This time traveling shoe is my only clue to finding Doc. What do you know about this shoe, Einie? Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? I 
I guess there's time for a quick game. Okay, now I'm ready. Uh, Doc's waiting for me somewhere in the past, and I've run out of quarters. Starbase Zero. I hope Jimmy's fixed the wild gunman machine. A1 liquor. I like the new bars Mr. Figgins put on the windows. Very secure. I ah. see you sneaking into that liquor store, young man! What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? Why couldn't Doc have invented a dog translator? Step away from the door! Ah. Now, let me get a look at you. Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. Hooligans! Get along now! Scat! E. Strickland? You aren't related to, uh, Vice Principal Strickland, are you, ma'am? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm his sister, Edna. Oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, aren't ya? Yes, uh, what's old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing I couldn't have deduced for myself, slacker. I'm not a hooligan, ma'am. I'm a, a teenager. I wasn't born yesterday, young man. Aren't you the miscreant who skateboards through the town square every morning between 8 and 8.30 in a decidedly unpunctual manner? Uh, yeah? All skateboarders are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. State your business, child. You're making me miss Merv. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Well? Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. A shoe? Wow, now what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> Stay there! Outside. Sorry, Einstein. Well, took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Hmm, much better. So neat and orderly. Nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh... Have a seat, Sonny. Hey! You kids! Put out those cigarettes! Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! 
Yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes. The day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch. No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe things about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. I guess somewhere in these stacks, there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Doing some stargazing? No, I set my sights on it. Lower things. Is that? Jim Tannen! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! Don't let me keep you from your business. Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear. Rebuilt in February 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date! Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. do that if I were you. Miss Pretty Whiskers is very particular about who handles her food. <laughs> is that Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. Marshal Strickland. My grandfather. 
gunned down by Mad Dog Tannen over a hundred years ago. That's not how I remember it. Jeez, they all look like they've got sticks up there. What's that? Nothing. Man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. And don't touch anything. Let's see. Ground broken on sight of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let no! me... No! You've gotten my history out of order. Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out, get out, get out! Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans! Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? It's a costume. Uh, tonight's the big uh, Halloween party. Halloween party? In May? Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. Ready to go, Einstein? Time circuits? On. Flux capacitor? Uh, fluxy. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc.
Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? man excuse me young man who uh, me you're the only man in the street and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction naturally you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment I read about it yeah what's your opinion of Carl Sagan the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years namely rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor Uh. There's got to be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You've got an honest look about you. You do support the side of righteousness, I trust. How'd Doc get himself into... Doc? Doc is his nickname. I'm good friends with Carl. You are? Really? Oh, but I need an unbiased opinion for my story. Pretend you don't know him. How would you feel about his heroic act of destruction? Well, I'm not so big on bomb blasts. Yes, but this bomb blasted a speakeasy, the very symbol of lawlessness and corruption. You're all for cleaning up the town, aren't you? Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? No, nah, not really. That's the spirit! Destroy them with indifference! If we refuse to patronize their establishments and glorify their wicked exploits, they'll soon be exposed for the pathetic wretches they are! May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Michael Corleone. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Corleone. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean... I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before! What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times! It's the law! Look it up! Doc! I gotta find Doc! Thank you.